Hello, everybody. We are coming to you from now sunny San Francisco. It's just the last few minutes that the fog has burned up. I'm here with Bria Leto, the CEO of Altvia, Kelly Fontaine, partner at Sendana Capital. I'm Jeff Williams from Altvia. And we've got a fun webinar for you planned today. We're going to hang out for just a minute, as all good webinars do here, to, to give people a moment to join us. We'll get started here in just a minute. Our coffee mugs make me feel like we're on the Today Show or something. This is getting ready to. Indeed, yeah. The, we need some stacks of papers. And yeah. <laughs> it's a pretty authentic panel mm -hmm. um, physical setup, yes. Yeah. Makes me think of Good Morning San Francisco from Full House. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Are you Danny Kenner? Yes, exactly. All right, maybe we'll get kicked off here with some slides for you. We do have some software demos for you as well here, and we'll uh, be eager to get to those. But first, let's go ahead and get us kicked off here with. And don't be shy, ask questions. I already see, you know, you guys are making connections through the uh, Crowdcast chat sesh. So feel free to keep those coming. Please do. All questions are good questions. Please do ask them. And I'm going to go ahead and share my screen for some slides. Yes, we're hoping to keep this very conversational. So like I said, ask questions. Uh, Kelly and I really wanted basically a script to read off of. And luckily, Jeff kept us honest and said, we need this to be more conversational. <laughs> so hopefully, it'll be a little more lively than if it were just Kelly and yeah. myself. <laughs> and feel free to weigh in on who, who got that. Uh, so the topic today is today's differentiated GP, the modern approach to data and technology. This is a, a super um, personal one to me, and we were just discussing how fund of funds have this problem in a totally different way. So we're super excited to, uh, to have you go through this today. Here's what we're looking at in terms of an agenda. Um, let's take a minute. We'll do some quick intros, and uh, and then we're going to get into talking through some opportunities the technology and data uh, provide, and ones which you've taken uh, good advantage of. And we'll talk a little bit about how you approach that, what it means for LPs, and then all of the many questions that y'all are, I'm sure, already submitting. Uh, we'll take a few minutes oh, towards the end. I need you to present, it sounds like. Hmm. Thank you, Juliet. Like we said, keeping us honest over here, off the cuff. So give us one second to make sure we're presenting. Okay. And I wonder if it's the full screen. Let's try this. There we go. Okay. How's that? Everybody good? Waiting for a live update. Yes, we are okay. good. Okay, excellent. Thank you. So uh, back, th this is as far as we've gotten. So thank you all for uh, keeping us honest. Let's go through some quick intros. Kelly, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, thank you for having me, first of all. You've been a wonderful partner, so I'm excited to be here and talk about what I love about you all. Um, I'm Kelly Fontaine, based in San Francisco, and I'm a partner at Sendana Capital, where I've been at about five years now, I joined in at the very beginning of 2018. Um, prior to Sundana, I started my career at Capital Group and Credit Suisse, kind of fell into data, to be honest. Um, in, at school, I studied journalism and business. And naturally. Kept, <laughs> naturally. Um, I love sports, and so I kept tackle, defensive tackles for the football team and really came into stats that way. Um, when I started my career, data science wasn't a thing. Um, but I did focus on data at Capital Group, moved to Credit Suisse, and then I did my own startup, which was point of sales analytics, so data. And then I joined a startup that was Kleiner and CRV backed that did IPO. And there I focused, um, we created a patent insurance product. It was one of the products we offered and I joined the Corp Dev team there. And that's another way I, I wasn't running the data team, but interacted with the data team so we could build out an actuarial model and underwriting um, processes. 
So my career has expanded different gamuts of data. Um, so when I joined Sendana, I was very excited to get my hands around their data. Um, a little bit about Sendana so you know where I'm coming from. Uh, we are a fund of funds and we exclusively invest in pre-seed and seed funds and we do that globally. Um, venture capital. Venture capital. Yeah. So we have 2.2 billion under management. Our first fund is a 2012 vintage. We're currently raising, wrapping up our fund five raise. So when I talk about data, it's I can wear the G, GP hat of how we do our own data, but also the LP hat and what we look for in our own managers when we invest and how we want their data to be structured and what would they want we want them to show us. So I will try to speak from both hats um, on how we look at data. Mm -hmm. And I'll come back to that too, because I came from a similar background. Great. Yes. Well, I was going to say, Kelly is our, uh, you know, secret cheerleader out there in the market because she's got so many different connections between GPs and LPs and consumer prices. So we owe a lot of our growth to Kelly. So thank you. Uh, yes, Brie Lotto, CEO of Alt VI. I've been here about two years. Um, some of you have maybe met, some of you I haven't quite yet, but all of my background is pretty much in, in tech and growing and scaling businesses. So. And doing it well. At LPI, yes. Uh, I'm Jeff Williams. Perhaps you've uh, bumped into me on these webinars before. I'm Chief Strategy Officer. And what I was going to say is I came from a venture fund of funds as well, Greenspring Associates, early in my career. And, you know, we were very forward thinking in terms of technology as well at a different time, like 15 years or so ago. And, um, and so in many cases, I, you know, have ended up working on trying to solve a lot of these same problems, but I can also share the flip side of sometimes doing it a little bit less efficiently. So let's get in to um, the meat here. I wanted to start with this because I think this is incredible. I mean, it's just a slide with a pie chart, but let's really break this down. According to a private equity international survey of uh, institutional LPs, only two out of three of them felt like the information they got from GPs uh, or, or sorry, two thirds believed that it was not even good. And 92% believed it was not excellent. And this is where, yeah, I think you and I can both sort of bear witness to the fact that I think I tend to agree. This is what makes me passionate about solving this problem. It's pretty outstanding, right? I mean, would that jive with what? Yeah, with your I mean, I definitely think it's correct. And that's why if you're doing what's industry standard, is that even what you want to achieve, right? Yeah. The, the industry standard is subpar. And I think it's very easy to stand out um, if you do things a little bit better. Uh, and again, I think fund management is a business. And so it's really understanding how you want to run your business. Yeah. yeah and I think it was interesting, you know, in talking about this is your experience as an LP and what you're looking for as an LP. Right. So, I mean, we definitely have GPs who, when you ask a question and it takes a week to get the answer back, you're wondering, why don't you have your arms around all of this information already? If you're actually an investor, it's not just if that one company is doing well, but how is the portfolio doing? Wait, you should have these answers so that you can really monitor your own portfolio, your own investments. It's very important to be organized and to be able to monitor your investments. And so I think it's an important way that you show your stakeholders that you know what's going on and that you're being able to dig further and what, what's going on well and what's not and why. Why don't you push your analysts harder with <laughs> more Excel skills? Uh, and that's really the point, right? Is that there's a missed opportunity? Is that it's not it's not standing out? I mean, there are uh, there's so much happening around NPS, Qualtrics, a well-known company, big one. Um, just focused on on trying to enable the customer experience that stands out. And we've kind of talked about this before on webinars. I think it might be a little bit awkward to phrase like your LP relationship as your customer experience, but in spirit, is it not the exact same thing? I mean, it sounds to me like there's missed opportunities by GPs for which you are an LP. Correct. I mean, we definitely want to see that they're building their firms. Again, we focus on venture firms. So it's very important that they're building their firms so that they're supporting their investments the best they can, right? That's the number one. But the other thing is, is how are they going to do that if they don't know what's going wrong, right, what actually is the result of their investments? And so that's really important. And that's the other stakeholder. There's not just one stakeholder uh, in their businesses. And for us, it's the same thing, right? If we were just 
investing, well, how do we know what's going right and wrong in the portfolio? We, we tweak how we're investing, our check sizes based on the data and how we're analyzing our own investments in portfolio. So it's really important to understand the data to be able to understand what's going right and wrong. Yep. I'm going to propose a reason why this is the case. And I also want to take a minute to acknowledge that we have yet to trademark the title of this slide, which I think we should. It's great. Um, here's why I think that's the case. I think that the technology in this market has evolved for whatever reason, just the sort of incumbents in the history to be, um, to have a problem. And the problem is, and I'll develop this here over a few seconds, but the problem is really that gray chart. To be sure, uh, Alvia as a technology provider in capital markets provides uh, functionality and effectively all of what's green here and, and doesn't and what's great. But the reason that I want to unpack this a little bit as the blocker is because I'll, I will make the case that everything over here on the left, these two columns, fund inception and portfolio management, if we sort of went through all of the green boxes, which we won't, well, look right at the top, relationship management. Generally, this bucket of columns are things that a lot of people associate with CRM. CRM stands for customer relationship management. And yet, all of the sort of reporting and interface with the customer is over here on the right. And it's structured this way. I didn't structure it this way. I, 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 want, it, I want to claim credit for the title and trademark. <laughs> However, this is sort of an industry report that this is structured in. And I think what, what we can uh, suggest here is that the reason a lot of the interfacing and reporting is over here is because it's almost sort of this natural life cycle flow where a lot of the information that's required to properly do some of this reporting is accounting based in, in some of the incumbent accounting systems. And so naturally, or, or as we were talking before, administrators are now doing this it's a huge part of, of the market now. And so it's like, well, just attach the sort of last line there, right? Like let the sort of reporting and interfacing ha happen there. And I'm going to make the case here that that ends up being a systemic blocker because those are oftentimes separate systems. Like in our case, we don't provide those systems, um, but you've got the customer relationship stuff and then you've got the customer and the interface and the reporting to them. And, and oftentimes it's disconnected. Well, we're gonna fast forward and show you how, you know, we've sort of broken down this blocker here by acquiring information from, from other providers and, and reattaching reporting and interfacing um, to CRM systems. Does that feel like a fair assessment if I think about it that way? Like sometimes the sort of accounting systems and the portals and stuff like that. Yeah, I think, you know, funds and firms have front offices, back offices, so do LPs. Um, and I think everybody kind of works separately. And if the data doesn't all talk, then number one, you can't even analyze all the data against each other, mm -hmm. right? So if you're getting a distribution, that comes from the accounting and it's not over here. In, attribution on your investment level data. It, so it, it's redundant data workflows. It's not always correct. And so having the data in one place is extremely important to be able to provide even the reporting to the LPs in the way that you would want to. Yeah. And if you're not, you're missing an opportunity because the reality is, is that you're always fundraising, right? Isn't that, I mean, you're fundraising, your GPs are constantly fundraising. And so a lot of the investor relations activities are really fundraising activities, right? Again, providing an outstanding customer experience, differentiating. There's opportunities all over the place, and you're you're constantly sort of under the the bright light because you're fundraising, right? Everything's an opportunity that you have with every time you interact with an LP. It's an opportunity, yes, for the next fund, um, for setting up the stage for their next commitment to you. Yes. Yep. Let's talk about how you're doing this because you're, you're doing this amazingly well. And it's cool because sometimes we hear from customers who are less familiar with some of the technology problems we can solve for them about you. And of course, like a lot of times we're talking to sales prospects who want to talk to you. Which is, <laughs> here we are, exactly. <laughs> but let's talk, you're, you're doing this, in our world. <laughs> yeah, you're doing this, you're doing something really well. Help us kind of understand how you approach this. Yeah, so when I started at Sendana, we're a very small team and we're a small team today. We're, you know, there's four investment professionals and one VP of finance. Um, we do leverage a fund administration firm, 
but that's our team, right? And we have 2.2 billion under management and we have 60 fund relationships now. So us being able to scale happen because of software and because of how we've structured the data. Um, but I think an important part, stepping back on also how we work, I think it's important to say our investment thesis is that we want concentrated portfolios. So high ownership, uh, less companies in the fund, each fund for venture. And then we structure our portfolio the same way. We want to be the lead investor. And so that doesn't just mean the largest check, but we are very hands-on with our managers. That means a monthly call with 55 monthly calls we do with all of our managers, monthly calls with our larger LPs. And so that very hands-on approach also is important how we act with our managers and the data that we wanted to capture. So with that being said, when I joined, I took everything that they currently were tracking and I, uh, this is my first time on the LP side of the table. So I also sat down and spent a few months of like, you know, what else could we track? What else would we want to track? So you really have to get your arms around everything in the universe that you would ever want to track in your business. And I think it's important because emails, number of meetings, all of this matters because how many opportunities are you seeing? How many make it through the pipeline? All of this needs to be quantified if you want to help processes for your business and everything is considered data in my opinion. And so I think it's important in private uh, investments is where is that data coming from? Because it's not just a pipe that you can turn on. We can't just say, oh, we're going to track all the credit card data. It's all very opaque and it's all has to be extracted and it's all very proprietary to you, which gives you a total competitive advantage if you're extracting it and modeling it. So, but it's really understanding where it's coming from, how you can structure it. So getting your arms around all of the data, putting it all out there, and then how can you are, how can it be structured so that it actually all talks to each other? Because again, if I have one spreadsheet over here and a database over here, how are you ever gonna analyze the data? And so I think it's really important to get it all out on the table and know that there's gonna be more, right? There's gonna be more as you grow your business. And so then you can start looking at what the solutions would be, right? And so it took me a few months to get my hands around the data that we were going to use before I even understood what solutions we could look at. Yeah. And so this is- And here a, it is. This is. Here's the answer, right? <laughs> yeah. This is a sample of, you know, things that we're currently tracking. Obviously our own data, the fund level data, our manager's data, the company. We have 2,900 companies in the portfolio what we track on those companies. There's 12 qualitative points, the KPIs. Um, you know, I think an important part really, when I keep coming back to this, is proprietary data. Because again, everybody has different data that they're, that they're getting from managers. Sometimes they have a great relationship and they're getting you know, the customer names of who's providing the revenue for these companies. So it's really, what is the proprietary data you're getting that if you harness it, it'll make you that much more valuable. Mm -hmm. And so for us, we really spend a lot of time on the proprietary data we get, and we haven't really leveraged third-party data systems. Um, but so these are data sets that we track. Yeah, I want to point out on that note that you don't have to be a fund of funds to have proprietary data. Nope. Right? I mean, um, you, you mentioned an example. I mean, understanding what's going on inside your portfolio companies as the GP only. Um, understanding how data points of sort of operational data that they have correlate. I mean, the the opportunities are limitless. You don't have to be a fund of funds. I, mm -hmm. I'm passionate about the fund of funds one because it's sort of a compounded problem. Um, and you're a GP and LP bull, so you've sort of got all the same dynamics, but, but you certainly don't have to be a fund of funds. No, our GPs, when I look at what they track, right, they should be the ones that do it really well. It's obviously the ownership, the current share price, their prorata decisions, the portfolio models. But also it's, hey, their sourcing capabilities. Which companies did they miss that are actually in their sector and wheelhouse and following up on which networks they're missing out on? So it, it just depends on what they're specifically wanting to track, but everybody should be tracking their own investments in their own universe of investments and LP data, LP relations as well. Yeah, so actually I'm getting texts of questions that have come Ooh, through. Fun. So how do you track the LP satisfaction? How do we track it? Mm -hmm. And delighting the customer. As AUM per, as per employee. <laughs> well, he said outside of high returns and high integrity investors. Yeah, I, I think LPs do uh, vote with their feet. So, I mean, I think it's a lot about um, the re-up and the check size of the re-up. And 
hopefully you're not getting to that uh, answer too late. Uh, I would say, I think we engage pretty consistently the LPs. We have monthly calls, so we know what they're asking for. Our largest LPs we have monthly calls with, even not large LPs that really just want to be engaged. And I think those monthly calls, if we're providing the service and value and knowing what they want, then it's that immediate feedback of like, oh, they actually would like to see this from us. Or, hey, if we would track this or provide this report, it's valuable to them, we should show it to other LPs. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's that consistent feedback of when we do show data to them, when we do expose things to them, how they react, if they come back with more questions, if they're satisfied with what we're showing them, um, it's immediate feedback for us. Well, you know, I, I can't help but go back to the slide, but I mean, imagine how much you stand out right among those survey results. I mean, you're basically in the sort of elite 8%, the very top of that. And so I guess going back to our previous point of like the data, you don't have to be a fund of funds. I mean, there's just such an opportunity to do anything and to involve your LPs or your customers, as I'm going to uncomfortably call it. Um, in a conversation about your technology and about your data, you know, they're, they're sitting there sort of begging to see something to differentiate you. Yeah, I think, I mean, the GPs that stand out in my mind can tell us how many opportunities they looked at, which geos that they've seen more opportunities from, what trends they're seeing in their own sourcing, right? They're able to tell us these things because they are tracking the data, yeah. right? They can say, you know, we've seen a lot more of this type of founder lately or this type of company lately in the sector. Um, they, they have a pulse on what's happening, not just anecdotally, but a, a quantitative answer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. By the way, I do love those venture managers that tell you very confidently in the companies they missed on because their track record, the ones that they didn't yeah. miss on is so good. I love that. Yeah, the anti-portfolio. The yeah. anti-portfolio, yes. Shout out to BVP on that one. Um, okay, walk us through a little bit of sort of how so this works. Another question came in related to your financial. Oh, good. A question. Yes. Great question. Okay. Sorry. Walk us through a little bit, sort of how. So again, when I took a step back and looked at all of the data that we needed to get into one place, if we wanted to be able to analyze all of the data, we needed it in one place. Um, we get it from Standish, which is our fund administration firm, right? All the fund administration firms that our GPs work with, um, that's a Duro, VMS, Carta, et cetera. So we, we get data from them, right? Uh, the updates that we get on a quarterly basis, which tend to be in the form of email or PDF letters, emails from our managers. We have a Slack channel with our managers. Uh, we do 55 monthly calls, again, on a standing rolling basis. All of that data within those call notes and the call notes themselves. Uh, law firms, of course, we get information from the term sheets and from our own subscription documents on our own LPs and who we should be corresponding with in the subscription documents. And then again, third-party data applications, that was kind of lower on our list because we really wanted to harness the pri proprietary. Yeah. Um, there's still a lot we could do if we did more universe versus our portfolio. But um, again, the, the bulk of our effort has been on our own proprietary data. I think that, about that a lot of times. I'm like, just give everybody the same data set, like PitchBook, Prequin, you know, all of whom are partners of ours and we value them tremendously. But I sort of almost kind of comically think in my head, what if everybody just had that, you right. know, and would everybody sort of just be trying to crowd into the same, you know, who knows? But the point is, is there's got to be something that's proprietary, right? That is sort of table stakes for you. Yeah, I think it's it's what's unique to you and what's your advantage and what's your niche, right? And why you're creating your investment thesis philosophy, why you're doing your portfolio construction. Anything about your investments should come from, have some not just anecdote but there's got to be some data to support and back it up these days yeah well and I, that's a great point because there's got to be some data somewhere i think there's a lot of people that are discouraged and they say like well we don't know we don't necessarily have that data and mm -hmm. what i say is like that data is being generated it's just like exhaust it's in your office it's like now at home with your employees right right it's just like the every keystroke is something and how do you sort of harness that like how do you where you do know, you start well, and so, I mean, that's as an example, right? Like how many pitch decks do we see per year? And so you could extract the performance from each pitch deck and say, hey, this is, you know, as much as you want to say Cambridge benchmarks, well, they don't tell you fund size, they don't tell you number of companies, other information. Well, if you're just taking that information from pitch decks and putting it into your database, then you've created your own benchmark selection yeah. of 
So there's different ways to do it, but yes, again, it's it's all information that you probably have access to. It's just taking the effort to extract it. Well, you know, high volume um, outbound models in private equity. I mean, you're seeing a lot of you know companies, right? And you might not have names to associate them with quite yet, but there's a lot of data in those sims. And, and so that's a place to start, right? How do you start to kind of systematize that data? This was not a planned question, but there was one that came through. Could you recommend tools or platforms to manage data? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you to whoever asked yeah. that by chance. <laughs> Certainly, we, and we will. So, so we're getting there on the next mm -hmm. two slides. <laughs> look at all this data. Um, so when we look at Sedona, it's really when we talk about stakeholders, what makes our ecosystem work? Why, why, how do we want to build the firm into the future? And it really is, you know, credit to our GPs. They're the ones that are finding the best companies and investing in them and creating the ecosystem. So we really, you know, we want to be able to give data back that's relevant to them, right? And so we do that. Um, we, we can benchmark sectors with the valuation of companies in a specific sector or geo is. We can benchmark what their portfolio construction looks like versus other funds in our universe and within our portfolio. So we try to, you know, utilize the data we take and give it back to them. Our portfolio companies, obviously, we we talked about this. We we try to track every every single data point we can about the companies themselves. Twenty nine hundred companies, um, and then downstream investors that helps our fund managers and the companies if they're getting the next round of funding. And so how can we best highlight the underlying companies? Um, and then our LPs, of course, and our advisors. So everybody has, and we could utilize our data for everybody. And so it's, we really laid out then of all this data, what are our priorities, right? Number one, to make sure our investments are correct and to how do we best hone our own investment portfolio. Uh, the GPs, the LPs, looking at all our stakeholders and really prioritizing the analysis that we wanted to do for each stakeholder. Yeah, love it. And so this is just one simple thing, and it seems like it should be one click. And when I started, it seemed like, oh, you should just be able to press a button and do this. Um, and it's not. <laughs> and it turns out it's, it's okay if it's not. I, I okay. encourage people all the time, let's just have a little moment for that. Yeah. Bury it, have a funeral because it, you can still get there. We just have yeah. to get past this one click. Uh, so we have built out our database now so that a lot of stuff is one click, which is mm -hmm. uh, great for our GP because he always wanted things to be one click. <laughs> uh -huh. Now I made it possible. And it's taken years to build to get there though, I would like to say. Um, so if you just want to look at how much does a specific company mean to us? How much does a specific company mean to one of our funds? or an LP specifically in our funds. Um, that question is actually very difficult because we can have a company with three Sendana managers that invest in it, right? And they all own different amounts of it. Um, and that seems like it should be a simple calculation, but it's not. We have different entities that own different funds. And so the roll up look through is we invest, Sendana invests into a fund, they invest into a company. And so looking at our overall exposure it's you have to track a lot of things and structure it correctly so that you can get to this answer. So I can tell you if you're an LP in our fund, this is your exposure. This is the dollar amount that this specific company means to you. Yeah. Well, I can tell you too, if you sort of removed the GP investment into company, which is what a lot of y'all that have joined us today would effectively do in this, uh, it becomes a little bit simpler, but, but again, the sort of proper structuring of the data, proper ingestion of the data, um, and then proper analytical capabilities. I mean, now you have a, you still have LPs. They still want to know as you're fundraising or, or, you know, well, you're always fundraising. So, hey, what's, you know, what are we exposed to in terms of this sector, this geography, right? Now you guys have sort of dual layers here and that's what, that what, that's what makes this really interesting to me. But you don't, again, don't have to be a fund of funds to have some of these challenges. Sometimes it seems like one box, hey, what is our sort of look through to our LPs? Well, it, it turns out that, you know, uh, even a simpler model still has its own complications. Yeah. I mean, what percentage of your companies are at a certain revenue run rate? There's, I mean, the answers for specific GPs, There, it, you don't have to be a fund of funds to have questions where you want to just be able to press a button rather than export the analysis in Excel and yeah. recreate analysis every time you're asked. Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, here's kind of how it looks like. Um, and this is, I love this chart. I know you do too. Uh, might be a little foreign to some of the folks, but it turns out the point ought to be here that there's a lot of data in a lot of places and we need to get it somewhere and then use proper tools to be able to do these things. So we can just run one click. Right. Yeah. So this is a screenshot of our answers data cube. And so the data cube is actually mainly pulling from uh, Salesforce. So it's just showing how we can link every single thing in Salesforce so that you can query and do analysis on anything because it's all linked to each different table in Salesforce. Mm -hmm. We're a, a Salesforce partner, I'll be uh, We are sort of ominously sitting underneath the Salesforce <laughs> tower here in San Francisco. And so I, outstanding company, outstanding partner. But, um, you know, not necessarily, I, I think uh, VP of sales forecasts in terms of reporting, hey, here's here's the forecast, here's the historical trend. It turns out look through exposure on private equity portfolios is not where, you know, Salesforce got its start, nor where they sort of want to be really, really developing things. And that's that's where we come into the picture. So let's get back to the question. Though. Yeah, well, that was exactly where I was going to lead us to okay. is why don't you walk us through what it felt like coming in and determining once you had the, the data yeah. plan in place? Yeah, so I mean, I think when we looked at everything that we wanted to track, and where our business could grow, right? Um, there's still several different business lines that could be on the table for us, not that we're doing them um, anytime soon, but if we wanted to, what else would harness this, right? And I looked at each of these providers and actually probably more than this, but these are the top ones that I kind of have stayed in contact with even over the years, just to see where their products have grown to. And nothing got us there, right? Everything could be like, oh, this can take care of your relationship management, right? Yeah. This can be your people tool. Well, what about the company data, right? Like everything was only partial, was one part of the problem. And again, if all your data is not in one place, then you're never going to be able to analyze everything in your, in your company. And it should be able to, from sourcing to investment to post investment to LP relations, it should all be able to talk mm -hmm. and you should be able to run analysis on all of it. And so, um, it came down to the fact that there's nothing that could get there. Um, a customized tool was necessary; it was needed. And so, I looked at Airtable. This was five, six years ago, and it was newer and not. You, there's not APIs, and I didn't think it would be able to scale with us. Um, and I had worked with Salesforce before, so I was comfortable. But I started calling consultants. I'm a one person, uh, one person within a three person shop at that point in time. And so I needed leverage and help and everybody I talked to did not understand what I was talking yeah. about. They really were, good at Salesforce, not so much at your market. Yeah. Correct. I mean, they were talking about how they were going to create things on the account level that should not be on the account level. Even I knew that I'm not yeah. an expert. They're the experts, but it, it just was very clear to me that I was wanting Salesforce's solution, but I didn't think we could even do it because there wasn't a partner that we could partner with. And then finally, my own personal research found you all through internet search. And the first demo I had, I was like, they get it, right? They, they do this, they live, they breathe this, they are specific to our industry, they get it. And the way you were thinking about structuring, the way you structured your own portfolio demo, I was like, this is exactly how I was thinking of our own. Um, and so it was an automatic fit for me that I knew that, you know, whatever I wanted to build in the future, I could either, if you guys didn't do it, I could pipe it in or figure out something because Salesforce is a platform where you can build off of. But I knew that you guys were the right partner because how you already had a harness of our data problems and what we wanted to accomplish. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think one of the things that, that we oftentimes get is, oh, you're just another Salesforce consultant. We are most definitely not. We yeah. help. Uh, yeah, no. bridge the gap between Salesforce and, and this market. We work specifically in it. So we pre-built applications that that bring the data structure that's needed. But we also, on the back end of things, provide the analytical capabilities as well as the engagement capabilities. So we allow you to sort of take that right to your LPs. Well, and you're, show it you're a partner. I mean, again, if I come to you with, hey, we would actually like to do this with our data or add this into the system, you guys can think three steps ahead of where I'm already going, right? And so I think that's not a consultant, that's a partner, and that's the biggest difference, right? Um, and has been allow, it's allowed us for the four-person team to accomplish what we have with our own databases, really you all. 
I think we need to fact check the four things. Two billion, two point two billion and four employees. It's incredible. It really is. I'm, I'm Did you so do the cool. demo to Kelly when she was looking for systems? Um, not the first one, but I do recall, yeah, the first time we met and <laughs> um, many demos along the way. Yeah, yeah, it's been fun. It's actually been really, I'm, I said proud. I'm not kidding. I'm really proud of what y'all have done because it's uh, so impressive and with, with so few resources. And uh, been able to take the tools and use them to its fullest extent, to sure. what it's intended for, which I think is a really core component of this. Like when you looked prior to that slide, if you want to go back real quick, you know, this can look confusing if you don't, if you're not actually in the system and understanding it. But, you know, you could even connect a couple of these pieces of data and get a lot of outcomes from it. But you've really yeah. spent and they, some time. Each of these was its own, let's call it Excel workbook, right? And so each of these right. was only an analysis in itself in the own in its own workbook. And so we really think, you know, with you all, how we've worked with you all is we got all the data I could in at once, right? Um, our fundraising still lived on Google Sheets, I hate to admit. Um, getting the other two partners to actually like do some things was hard because they like to look at things in Excel view. Um, this is our first fundraise we've done on within the pipeline and within all the, uh, mm -hmm. with the name. And it's been great because we can probability wait. It's a Kanban view. It's real time and everybody can log in and see where we are with things. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we do our own investment meetings every week now and there's a pipeline of investments for us to go through. So these are all things that have been added in over time. Mm -hmm. um, I would say we, we started with just AIM, then we added in uh, answers, which for me has been the biggest game changer uh, of all your products. I think it's absolutely what takes your business to the next level, right? Um, and I think that is what we'll do a demo of. Yeah. And then we added in Share Secure, I think just last year. And ultimately, our decision on that was I, I've told you all portals are a necessary evil. Um, <laughs> I, you know, again, we have 60 fun relationships logging in the portals, not ideal, um, but they are a necessary evil. And it meaning that somebody else was owning our portal, right? Our fund administration firm was owning the portal, portal, therefore owning LP communications, therefore owning a little bit of our LP relationships. And that's not ideal, right? We wanted that in house. And so that's when we switched over to share secure so that we can own the data they're seeing the communication style, the frequency, and what we're showing them. And mm -hmm. so that's the last piece that we most recently put in place was adding Share Secure on last year. Yeah. And I think that's that sort of gray column, right? You had it, and now what, what becomes possible for you is, oh, I, you know, I can see that they've just logged in and looked at this data side. And, yeah. and maybe you know the customer relationship manager is um, going to make a call now. Maybe not, right? You don't have to. but. Um, creating opportunities by bringing it to be a part of, of managing the relationship. I think people are yes, eager to see software have. demos. I, and we've gotten a couple more questions, which keep them coming, um, but we'll get into the demonstration and I'm sure we'll uh, pick some additional questions and then we can answer maybe the last, the questions in the last, call it, few minutes. Okay, Six, I am seven. going to reshare I guess we're going to um, see ourselves for just a brief second here. That's okay. Okay. So this, this is real. This is a real software demo here. Uh, we're conscious of some of the sort of information here. So we're, we're, we're confident that we're not sharing anything overly sensitive. Uh, but real life, this is what your data looks like. And to kind of orient some of the folks that may be less familiar, this is the answers product that Altvia offers. And which brings all that data together, enables you, you know, I always look at this sort of screen and I think like five analysts, three nights, a lot of coffee. <laughs> you maybe get to something like this, but walk us through kind of what, what, uh, what we're looking at here. I mean, th these are, this is that pretty complex calculation that you were talking about before. Yeah, I think again, it's going back to rolling up all the managers that are in the company um, and looking at it. So this is ultimately, you know, on the right side, you can see that there's filters. Those are dashboard level filters, meaning if you click one of them, the entire dashboard will filter on that. 
So at the top, when it says entity, that's our fund. So if we wanted to look at only the top companies in Sendana Fund 1 or all of the entire Sendana portfolio, it will filter. Um, we can also look at it by our investment into it. We have what we call pilots, which is a million dollar check, or we can just look at it at our core checks, $10 million checks, mm -hmm. 10 to $20 million checks. Um, we can look at it by geo sector. All of these filters are so that you can go deep, deep, deep into the analysis, right? Like, okay, that's our top companies. Great. But what's our top companies from our crazy managers? What's our top companies in New York? What's our top companies look through for managers that are fintech focused? So all of this is very easy to immediately do deeper analysis and drill deep down into. Mm -hmm. Um, so again, this is just the first thing that was the initial, like, why don't we have this? Why is it so difficult to get to? And it was the look through. Um, and so then when you go down here, when you scroll down, you know, I think a lot of people look at the vintage of the fund and we like to look at it at the vintage of the companies, right? So a fund is supposed to be investing over three years, but like, what are the actual underlying companies look like. And so we can drill down further from the actual initial investment made into the companies and when the dollars were actually deployed. Um, and when you go down further, we keep an eye on the median ownership and the median valuations and what's going on in the portfolio. Um, you know, it's important for us to track how much it costs to buy a 10% ownership stake of a company because that informs what the fund size should be. And so all of these things are what we track um, because we hear anecdotally, oh no, things are over $30 million at the seed, seed stage now. Well, in our portfolio, people are finding stuff that aren't. Mm -hmm. So, you, you know, it, it's fact checking and kind of seeing what, what trends are actually occurring. Mm -hmm. And it goes back to, you can look at sector, geo, anything and kind of expose that data. And, and like this sort of thing for me, it's always like, that. I don't know, maybe that jumps out to other people. Maybe it doesn't, but to your point, I mean, it's, it's as simple as kind of clicking on that, right? And hey, let's see what that returns for us. Yep. And it was, you got a lot of data here that we're crunching. Yeah. Come back. <laughs> but now the entirety, including the table above, has sort of been filtered down. down. There. So, you know, I we call this product answers. I, I joke with people that you can come get the answers you're looking for. A lot of times you're going to get answers maybe you weren't looking for. And again, to reiterate the point that... Um, Let's get rid of this. Um, to reiterate the point, this is your data exhaust. Doesn't really matter what is in the exhaust for any given firm, right? It's, you know, I always say, hey, you know, you think you know who sources good investment opportunities for you, do you? Have you really looked at it? Do you have the data inputs to, to, to properly assess that? What if they aren't good deals? What if you could correlate somewhere in that data exhaust for a private equity firm? We're spending a lot of time sourcing deals from somebody we think gives us good ones, but it turns out that I'm able to correlate, you know, exit outcomes or year over year top line growth to somebody else entirely who isn't as high volume, but isn't, you know, as competitive either. And so maybe we need to, you know, keep developing that relationship. More. Well, with an LP hat on, in venture specifically, it takes a long time. Well, even private equity, right? It's not going to be next year. You know, when are they coming back for their next fund? Well, there's not going to be, you know, a, at the seed stage, there's not going to be a billion dollar exit in two years, mm -hmm. likely, um, from a company. And so, like, how do you gauge how the portfolios are tracking? And so, we do track a lot of, you know, graduation rate, mortality rate, who the co investors and lead investors are in the follow on rounds. And what's going on within the portfolio and so we do have dashboards where we can if somebody's pitching us we can say well this is how you stack up against rgps from that vintage <laughs> or that sector you know yeah. and so like it, it it becomes a quick investment analysis tool um and again we we create a dashboard specifically for our lps that live on answers where we can show them their geo breakdown their sector breakdown um, so they can understand their own um, investment exposure so um, that's really what I'm excited to get I mean, to, but I mean, you if know, you scroll down a little bit, the graduation rate, like this was a, this manual calculation where you're having to go through and figure out who actually has raised a series A. Mm -hmm. And again, you don't want to double count companies if you have more than one manager in them. So there's all of these nuances and in Salesforce, you get part of the way there and export it and play around in Excel and every time it was a de novo analysis and here it's there every time you update the data and again we can filter it 
okay, what is our graduation rate for companies in New York? What is our graduation rate for this specific manager? You can you can get to a lot deeper analysis with the click of a button. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, I almost have nightmares at times, but it's like, oh, can we look at our portfolio by this? And, you know, you spend three days seemingly awake <laughs> doing that. And God forbid your Excel workbook, you know, uh, break down on you. But even if it doesn't and you get there and then you show it, you know, just to a partner who's going to show it to an LP because they asked. And it's like, well, we're going to need to pull, you know, the other thing in too for context, right? And, and that's to your point. It's like, we're that's another three analysis. days at least. <laughs> yeah. 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 And here it's seconds, right? Yep. Okay. Um, I could look at this all day. <laughs> I love this. Um, however, you just made this. That's pretty good. <laughs> a lot of unicorns um big ups to you guys for this you mentioned um, something right before i went on that little tangent which is this is a big flex for you right i mean this is you really standing out i know you guys put um a lot of emphasis on this when you fundraise but you don't stop there and and our vision as a company is really to enable this the technology that enables these kinds of relationships a key part of that is making sure that you know you're doing that and you're being the hand that feeds you inside your own portal and that that's this sort of circular piece of information for you and so what we aren't going to do is show you all of the real data that sanana is sharing with their lps but i do want to touch real quickly on just kind of what some of that looks like here um i'm going to log in this is now fictional and maybe julia can give us the thumbs up on making sure this is okay. It, it, I'm certain that we're still sharing a uh, proper screen here, but um, a look at you know portal. We now, yeah, I won't go too far into this because I want to take more questions. But very different. We rethought. I'm a lot like you, you know, the sort of PTSD of portal bad portal experiences. We rethought a, a, a lot of things here. Just the portfolio demo. So you're. Not showing this. I'm not. Okay. Thank you, Juliet and team. All right. Let's go back here and make sure we do that. Okay. And maybe while he's doing that, Kelly, I can ask you one of these questions, which is very relevant. How do you continue to ensure consistency in data across the various tech stacks, especially where there is overlapping? Um, so what we have done, I guess we, uh, we upload data where we can, right? So we get a lot of data from our fund administration firms, from our GPs. We've requested in Excel. The beauty of the way AIM is set up is that we can make sure that it's just automatically uploaded. Um, so I think where we can, we try to automate and not have as much human touch as we can on the input of data. Um, and so to make sure quality, and I think that is important though, talking about, you know, there shouldn't be a redundancy of entry, right? Like one person in finance should own the cash flows. One person should be in charge of it. It's going to be double checked on certain ways, but it should be in one place. And the way you guys have set it up is that, you know, what's the beauty of working with you is like, no, 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 we shouldn't input it there. Let's input it on this page. And then we'll have it mapped so it actually shows on this other screen. So really, the data should all just be in one place. And it does take a lot of effort to clean, uh, make sure that it's all consistent and precise. But you only input it in one place and have a correct processes for inputting and owning it and updating it. But if you stick to those processes, then the data can be in multiple places on multiple pages within Salesforce, within AIM, so that when you pull up the account, it'll show me what's the current valuation, even though I don't enter the valuation on the account page, right? And so the way you guys think about it is so that you only have to input it once for it to live multiple places. Yeah. Thanks, Kelly. So here we are. Now we're, you know, to kind of fast forward and connect the dots here. Now we're, we've got the ability to understand our own data from an internal perspective, which you clearly do. And, and now we're taking the step of saying, hey, here's portions of that data that we want LPs to be able to self-serve directly. So I, I clicked through it pretty quickly here while we while you guys were talking, but 
Um, one of those things, like for me, and go, again, going back to some of my PTSD, is like, can I not just narrow down and get a series of cash flows from you? Uh, we have a rather large commitment. Can I not just get you know a series of cash flows with dates that I'm looking for it out of the commitment we made out of this fund or that fund? Um, and so we're going to allow you know a lot all of the same functionality here. I think what's um, big to point out here too is that all those dots you can export all of this into Excel, um, and I think you know that's huge because most people provide everything in PDF. And again, what I've had to request over and over again for managers is like, hey, can we get it in Excel? Because there's human error if you're transposing or even double checking against PDFs, and everything in your dashboards you can even just download a widget. I'm um, sorry, each of these things each table is a widget um so the map above if you just want to be able to put that into your investment memo you can download that specific image and put it in the memo or you can download the actual excel data and do with it what you want so i yeah, think yeah. that's really cool on the uh, dashboards that it's not just a pdf you're being handed it's mm -hmm. you know you can take what from from the dashboard you want yeah yeah this one actually i think is a great example of that too you know i think back to when i was on the lp side and doing diligence and you know we were everybody from an lp perspective is presumably doing a lot of the same things and yet also very different ones but it was sort of like who's really investing in this fund you know and are they going to continue <laughs> Let's let's make sure the fund size is appropriate, all that. Let's make sure that person that really drove the value is still doing it. And let's make sure that person is still investing in the types of companies that they've historically been really good at investing in. You know, and and it, the traditional process was like, here's a big Excel file, good luck with that, you know. And and now it's sort of like I want to point out easier. how bad I am versus my colleagues, actually. So Nick jumps out right away as somebody that uh, super interesting. So I could go ahead and click this, but then I would, you know, get consumer software versus enterprise. And I want to come up here instead. And, you know, so now I'm almost sort of um, providing therapy to all my PTSD here by saying, okay, well, let's, let's look at the companies. Nick has primarily invested in these types of companies in the West coast. Um, you know, a little venture too, because this is a demo that I put together here. So you've got some rounds stuff like that, but here are those companies out of those funds. And here's, you know how Nick did investing this. Super interesting. Let me take that with me and and get on with it. And you know the the thing I think you know we we've, we've encountered at times when people is well I don't know if we want to share that much information. But this example that I'm showing here is literally that Excel file that we would have gotten anyway. Like we actually yeah. aren't sharing any new information. I, I think at the end of the day, it's transparency is key to relationships and trust and they're your key stakeholders and they're entrusting you with money and so you know if you make it easy for them to do analysis then there's a more trusted relationship and so that's how we work with it and you know i, I think that's how we approach it interesting point i know we're wrapping up here but i'm going to propose in closing here that maybe that's why 92 percent of the market <laughs> believes that you know, the, the customer experience isn't outstanding because it's built upon not actually wanting to be transparent or fear. And, and I think there is an important step of getting your data and your technology in order internally first. And what you find pretty quickly is that it's not only not a liability, it's a weapon. Now you go take it and, and put it in the hands of your LPs. Yeah. What other questions do we have? Well, I'm actually going to put you on the spot. Uh oh, yep. Uh, so I think there maybe was some, we just might need to clarify which portions like AIM, Salesforce, mm, sure. Altvia, Share Secure, Answers. Yeah. We got a couple questions about like, can you integrate other CRMs mm. and leverage the analytics tool and or the portal? Mm, okay, fun. Really good questions. Um, yeah, so, so I guess in an attempt to clarify, Altvia is a company that uses a, a number of different pieces of technology, a number of different products. One of the pieces of technology is Salesforce. We have um, chosen Salesforce as the sort of platform that, that we believe is best to, to build CRMs for this market. I'm gonna turn this um, sharing off here. There we go. Um, and so Salesforce is a piece of technology we use in our offering. Um, we have a, a sort of private market specific um, CRM that we built on Salesforce, we call that AIM. 
Answers is an analytics product, which we saw a lot of there. Chair Secure is a portal product. And by the time it's all said and done, all of these things are heavily integrated such that you know, your CRM can enable people in your portal to see data that is specific to them and relevant to them, like their capital commitments or track record or underlying portfolio of company financials or anything that you would really like to. I mean, that's a big part of what we're trying to do is enable y'all to, to have um, you know, the edge that, that you seek. And so if it's you know, examples other than this, um, that's cool too. It's actually a lot of fun for us to solve new, new problems. So that was on the products. Uh, the question about other CRMs. Mm -hmm. um, give us a call. We'll talk about it. <laughs> uh, we, you know, we we have um, done a number of things with our technology to try to, you know, enable folks to to leverage what they're currently doing in CRM. To the extent that um, you're doing it already inside of Salesforce, then um, the conversation is a little shorter. But call us. <laughs> uh, I think that was where there was like maybe confusion around sure. where did the dashboard live, which isn't necessarily in Salesforce, although it. He can, can be. be. Yeah. So yeah. we have we have our dashboards. Um, you know, we create them in answers, but we they can live. The other team members do not log in the answers. They only see it in Salesforce or they see it in Share Secure. Yeah. Um, so we have specific dashboards for specific LPs even in Share Secure that only specific LPs see. Um, and so, you know, I, I think it, the dashboards can live in Salesforce as well yeah. or in Share Secure. And so, just important to note on that that. Answers is a piece of technology that is not built upon Salesforce. In fact, yeah. it's very intentional that we've done that. You can put whatever tables, whatever data you want yeah. in the back. When you saw that weird tree map of all the data, those are Salesforce tables, but you can link it. Excel, to tables, Excel tables, other yeah. systems, all sorts yeah. of things. Yes. Mm -hmm. Which leads me to this question. Have your GPs been open, flexible to changing the format of the data they provide? Yes. Yes. Um, I, I think, again, we, the monthly calls and the relationship that we have, uh, largest LP, we kind of set like what other people have done. In, the best in our portfolio, what they have done is the standard for us and best practices. And we try to share that. Um, so I think there's some GPs who are very, um, very sensitive to company data because they feel that it's the founder's information to share. So they they do withhold a lot more. But on a reporting standard basis, we do have many uh, GPs who expose views to us um, and keep it up to date. And so, yes, we have been able to work with our GPs um, and providing them with templates uh, that they can then press their fund administration firms or even they utilize internally um, that we know is best practices. And don't you think at the end of the day, the speed with which they respond, the spirit in which they respond to your templates, but also then the speed with which they do. I mean, that means something to you. I, I think it means, right? you know, as part of your job, if you're running a fund, the number one thing is investing, but it's also a firm, right? It's also a company. And so how can you build that company? And part of that is, you know, you have to have understanding of your data mm -hmm. and your investments. And so I think it's just good organizational practices to have all that data available, to be able to say, yes, I have the answer. It shouldn't be having to be a lot of work when you're asked a question. Yeah. Or it put be, out by yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, you should be you should be questioning your own investments and and doing analysis on your own investments. Um, and so that data should be available. Sure. Yeah. Again, somewhat related. How do you get the LP individual statements being pulled from AIM, uploading large Excels? We've talked a little bit about this, obviously, yeah. and shown it, but and, and you use a fund administrator, and I think that's implied to be the, the question. Yeah. Well, so yeah, we get the cash flows and then they're uploaded into the system, um, uploaded into AIM, which is the Salesforce system. Uh, and then there's permissioning on the contacts within Salesforce and what they can see when they log in to share secure. So that's our workflow process is that we take from the fund administration firm and we just upload it directly into the system. Mm -hmm. And again, it goes back to then all the data is in one place. Yeah, And we do all of our, um, capital calls and distributions through uh, AIM and Share Secure. Mm, something we didn't even talk about. Yeah. yeah. Future webinar. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, we're up against I the top I think that's of the it. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think we got to everything, honestly. So thank you so much, Kelly. I know there's people on the other end of uh, the webinar that are 
very impressed. I am too. I'm super proud of you. It's been a lot of fun to work with you. You guys have been great partners. The reason where we are with a four person team. Yeah, yeah. You said, it. I mean, <laughs> thank you everybody for joining us as well. Uh, look forward to hopefully hearing from you and, and let us know how we can help you all with problems you're facing. Thank you. Thank Take you. Care.